welcome to another Mungle Dog production and welcome to Mount Bedell on the Gun Barrel Highway. Mount Bedell was named in honour of uh, Lem Bedell, certainly one of Australia's last great explorers who opened up so much of this, uh, this part of the country so that mugs like us could go and see this wide brown land. Anyway, grab your gear. Let's go. Well, first day on the road. We've only been on the road for about 260 kilometres and we're just about to leave the blacktop, the bitumen, and hit the unsealed roads. Once we hit the gravel, we're not going to see any steep, significant patches of uh, sealed road for the next probably 12 or 13 days, several thousand kilometres. So yeah, we're, we're nearly through the, the, the boring bits, that is the sealed stuff. Uh, it's a big group, we've got 13 cars in this group, so finding bush camps big enough to accommodate us all is going to be difficult. But yeah, so far, so good. Perfect start to the trip. Beautiful winter's day, lots of sunshine, farmland, which is looking pretty healthy. But it won't be long before we uh, hit the outback and it becomes all red dirt and scrubland. It's only uh, mid-afternoon, but uh, the trip leader, the bloke by the name of Steve, he, uh, he's uh, already uh, identified a campsite. We're going to be pulling up pretty soon. Um, we haven't covered a lot of territory today, but that's okay. Usually it takes people one or two days to, to find their rhythm. So pulling up early on the first day is not a bad idea. It just allows people a little bit of extra daylight to uh, establish camp and, uh, and develop a routine. Yeah, that's the one. into a small community called Payne's Find. It used to be a gold mining area around this region. Last night we were joined by a 14th vehicle, Tony, who's uh, an old stalwart of the, the club. And of course, yeah, now we've got to pull over and refuel. Not everybody will have to refuel. Some of these guys have long range tanks, but we'll probably lose an hour now because, just because of the amount of vehicles that uh, are in the group. But I guess that's, uh, that's to be expected. We're just outside of Sandstone. Uh, we've just taken a few minutes to have a look at uh, some of the things on their heritage trail. Sandstone used to be all about gold mining, so there's a lot of uh, a lot of remnants and infrastructure left behind from uh, that particular era. Well, we uh, we're just about to arrive at a place called London Bridge, which is a natural rock formation. Apparently, this uh, this place used to be pretty popular for picnics and the like with the locals back in the day. Well, it's only day two and here's the first logistical problem for us. We're just outside of Sandstone, we were going to call in there and refuel. Uh, the Bowser's on the Fritz and it's a Sunday. It's a self-serve Bowser, there's nobody in town who knows anything about it. So that's going to cause some heartache and misery for some people because they'll need fuel before we leave. I think they've decided to go to a place called Lake Mason which is an old disused uh, sheep station. We're going to camp there tonight and come up with a plan and that plan might be just to return to Sandstone in the morning and hopefully get some fuel from the local local Shire depot. Right, the 
plan is we're going straight out to Lake Mason unless anybody wants to go to the store in town, which is actually in the hotel. And from there we're coming into town tomorrow morning to try to organise fuel. Do we need firewood or anything from Lake Mason? Yep, we need to do, that was my next point, I was just going to say, we need to do a wood run on the way in. We'll stop somewhere out there, it's 50, 60 k's from here, so we've got plenty of opportunity. Well, the homestead is surprisingly, uh, surprisingly well intact. I don't know when it was uh, abandoned, but I remember staying here 13 years ago on one of my trips. Then it was under the control of the Department of Parks and Wildlife. Um, and they were charging people to stay here a few bucks each night. But uh, yeah, it used to be a sheep station. Goodness knows how you'd expect to run sheep in a place out here in the outback. But anyway, you know, it used to be a sheep station. Don't know how long it's been abandoned. But we've got uh, access to fresh water, running water. And uh, this is the old shear and shed. They've uh, tried to block off access to it now. Obviously the building's been condemned. You can imagine, you know, 50, 75, 100 years ago, blokes in there busting their ass, shearing, uh, shearing a couple of thousand head of sheep. Tough life. Yep, exactly, yep. And the sheep after being shorn would have been spat out, out of those chutes. Look, looks like a gypsy camp now that we've taken over. We've, uh, we've left for the morning. We had a late start. Some people wanted to crawl in and around the homestead and have a look around. Uh, as far as the fuel's concerned, last night uh, they all agreed that within the group we've got enough fuel in jerry cans and the like to, uh, to help out anybody who perhaps may have had to go back to Sandstone for fuel. So nobody's returned to Sandstone. We're all heading towards uh, Waluna. And as I said, uh, we've got enough fuel within the group to make sure that uh, nobody runs out. Uh, today should be fairly cruisy. We go to Waluna. That'll be the last opportunity to resupply for some days. There's not too much after Waluna in the form of uh, you know, communities or, or the ability to resupply. Uh, even fuel could become an issue. There's some long stretches between fuel stops after that. So, yeah, no real agenda today. We'll just uh, drive at a comfortable speed and, uh, and I guess later on this afternoon we'll find a spot on the map and, uh, and have another bush camp there.
coming up to the end of another day. We just uh, we've just peeled off the main road, just looking for a campsite, a bush camp. Uh, today's been pretty seamless. Uh, late start, refueled at Walloon are okay. Um, we haven't covered huge distances uh, at all on any given day, and that's okay. It gives you time to just uh, mooch and uh, yeah, take in the scenery. No fry pan, no problem. Just use the lid off your camp oven. Works perfectly. We've just arrived at Carnegie Station. We've done about 320 kilometres to get here, with not much in between. And from here, we uh, the next fuel stop is a Aboriginal community called Warburton on Great Central Road, and that's about 550 kilometres away, with very very little in between. So, uh, and some of the conditions from here are going to be be quite tough. My guess is we'll be here for lunch. It's a bit of an oasis in the desert here. We haven't passed. So what happened, mate? Rock. A rock. Stone bruise. Stone through there. Oh. It was, obviously it was uh, when it was, we couldn't see it when it was on the car, so it was obviously under the... That happens. So we thought, oh, quicker to change it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you've just plugged it now, or you plugged it out there? No, I just plugged it now. Yeah. Start the day with the sound of a compressor, and we <laughs> finish the same way. <laughs> Still pumping. <laughs> Still pumping. <laughs>
uh, we're just at a place called Geraldton Bore. The water quality here is very, very good, like coming out of your tap at home. Well, depending on where you live, I guess. It's been an interesting morning, a bit of wildlife, a couple of mobs of camels. The first mob was seven camels, and then there was some random buck on his own who decided to run up the, up the track, as they do. Um, they take the path of least resistance, and they're happy just to keep plodding along in front of you, doing 25 or 30 kilometres an hour until they have sense enough to get off the road. But yeah, and, and you just notice the change in terrain and also the landscape. It's becoming a lot more and more open. And the track conditions are starting to change as well. They're becoming a little bit more gnarlier. A few washouts, and I believe from this point onwards, eastwards, it, it gets a whole lot worse. But uh, yeah, we'll stop here and have lunch. Yeah, lots of lots of fresh water to, to allow us to top up uh, water tanks for you know dishes and cooking and the like. This is uh, Everard Junction, I don't know who Everard was, uh, but this is basically the junction of the Gary Highway. If you go that way to the north, that'll take you to Coonawarrigee, which is a small Aboriginal community on the Canning Stock Route, well 33. And of course, to the west is the direction we come from, Carnegie Station and uh, Waluna. And of course, to the east is Warburton. Yeah, the gun barrel continues eastward from here and the conditions get worse. There is a visitor's book here at Everard Junction and they've just uh, checked it for an entry. The club did a run here in 2016 and they've just found yeah, where they signed the visitor's book from uh, back then. camped in the middle of bumfuck nowhere and here's this dingo walking around like he owns the place I shit you not he's not aggressive he's docile yeah he's just walking around hey get away get get oh. it's unusual to have one on his own so there's probably a pack of them somewhere. It wouldn't surprise me if we hear some howling during the night. We'll wait and see. Well, it's the following morning. That dingo is still hanging around. There's, he's not a shy animal, that one. Um, and as a precaution, I, uh, I put my boots away because that would be like jerky to him but Barb is saying that she's uh, she can't find a phone and that had a leather case on it so we're suspecting the dog may have taken it. Well on a positive note Barb found a phone but it had been dragged through the dirt so she uh, yeah she suspects the dingo might have tried to do a runner with it.
Well, we're currently at Mount Padell, obviously named after Len, and I've talked about Len in other videos. We've got a lot to be thankful for, for Len Bedell. He was uh, pretty much one of the last great explorers, opened up a lot of the outback, primarily for rocket and atomic bomb testing in the 50s and 60s. But yeah, he's responsible for a lot of these outback roads that I guess allow us to do what we do. So yeah, this was named in his honour. And in fact, up the top here is a replica of the theodolite that he, uh, he used to use. It is a bit of a gnarly climb to get up to the top. And not everybody has been game to uh, to take it on. But that's okay. And if you have a look off in the distance, that's uh, the road we've come in on, the Barrel Highway through there. That's the end of the gun barrel for us on this particular trip. We've come to the gun barrel and Heather Highway intersection. Uh, from here we head south. Uh, that'll take us to Warburton, which is our next refuel and resupply stop. Uh, but we, that's still about 129 kilometres away. It's early afternoon, but I don't think we'll make it today because the conditions don't improve a whole lot until we get on Great Central Road. Now, uh, this has gotten very ugly very quickly. We've split up. We're, there was a fork, somebody didn't wait at the fork at the junction, and now the, the, the packet has been split up into two. I guess it just shows the importance of maintaining what I know as front to rear contact. Yeah, the, you can't afford to take any chances out here, because if you take a wrong track, it could be, uh, could be your last. No shortage of variety with the diet. Last night was uh, roast chicken, tonight, rutail. 